This tutorial will help you to complete the exponential function questions on homework number 11 on Delta Math. So don't forget the basics. An exponential function has a value outside of the parentheses, which is your initial value or your beginning amount. It has a number inside the parentheses, which will represent your rate of growth or your rate of decay. Remember, this number inside the parentheses uh, can be a decimal value, it can be a fraction, it can be an integer. And how you determine whether it's growth or decay is by whether or not the number is larger than 1 or between 0 and 1. So let's get started with the first basic type of question you're going to see. So the first questions that you'll see are about identifying whether an exponential function is growth or decay. So when you look at your values here, you can see that the initial value is 65 and the rate of change is 1.25. Now a rate of change for an exponential function is always a percentage. So 1.25 is out of 100. Right? 1.25 is out of 100. So what we're looking for you to understand is that is really 125 percent, right? Because that decimal can move over there two places to the right. So this is a growth function. And I know that because the rate of change is a number greater than 1, 1 1.25. So the 1 represents all 100 percent of the number. And this, after the decimal point, represents the extra growth. So the extra growth Right, so I'm going to choose over here that it's growth, and then the percentage is what part after the 100 am I growing? And that would be the 0.25, or the 25%, because I have to move my decimal point two places to the right in order to figure out what percentage that is. So it is a growth, and it's 25% increase. Let's take a look at another one. Here's my rate of change inside the parentheses, and my rate of change is a number greater than 1, so I'm going to choose growth from the drop-down menu. Now don't forget, you have to move your decimal point to places to the right in order to determine the growth percentage, 7.4%, not 0 0.074. Once you move the decimal, you'll get your growth or decay. All right, let's try another one. All right, let's take a look at that value inside the parentheses. This time the value is 0 0.97. That is less than 1. That is less than 1. So that is decay. All right, now it's not a 97% decay. It is 100%, right? And if you only have 97% of the number in the next round, then that is a decrease of 3%. Right? So how do you get from the 100% down to this 97%? So that is a decay of 3%. Let's try another one. This one is growth. And if I move the decimal point one, two places, I'll get a 6.3. This one is decay. This one is decay because the number is less than one. All right, so if I move this decimal point over, it's 99.1. And what is that change from 100%? Right? What is the change from 100%? So 100 minus 99.1. So that is a decay of 0.9% or 0.9%. Awesome. All right, let's take a look at the second topic. The second topic is going to ask you about that basic formula. So an element with a mass of 590 grams decays by 19.5% per minute. How much of the element is remaining after 15 minutes? 
So first on my scrap paper, I'm going to need to set this problem up. Remember, this is the formula. And you can either have growth or you can have decay. Now don't forget that the one represents the 100% of the value you have when you begin, and then you'll either grow by a percentage rate or you'll decay by a percentage rate. So my example here has an initial value of 590 grams and it decays. So I'm gonna use a one and a minus sign. And it decays by 19.5%. Don't forget to move that decimal. And the time is 15 minutes. Okay, so all I have to do now, now I can simplify this if I want to. 1 minus 0.195, I could simplify that if I want to, but I don't need to since I'm gonna use my calculator anyway. So I'm gonna turn my calculator on, and what I'm gonna do now here is I'm just gonna type it exactly how I see it. 590 parentheses 1 minus 0.195 parentheses raised up to the power of 15. That's it. So it says to round to the nearest tenth, so 22.8, 22.8, right? Because that nine's gonna round me up, 22.8. So I'm gonna sub submit my answer here, 22.8. Let's see what they say. Awesome. Let's clear this ink and try it one more time. All right, a new car is purchased for $15,500. The value of the car depreciates at 7.5% per year. So 15,500 is my initial value, and it depreciates, so that's a minus sign. And don't forget to move your decimal. It's not a 7.5 here, don't do that. It's not a 7.5. It's 7.5%, which is 0 0.075. And six years is my length of time. Again, I could certainly uh, simplify this 1, point, 1 minus 0 0.075, but there's really no need to since I'm gonna use my calculator anyways. So let's clear this out. So I have 15,500 parentheses 1 minus 0 0.075. Whoops, I got the wrong key there. Oh man, got the wrong key. Let's do this again, 15,500 parentheses, one minus 0 0.075 raised up to six years. It said round to the nearest cent. So that would be hundredths, so 17 cents. 9709.17, 9709.17, let's just double check. 9709.17, submit. Yes, all right, so this one is a growth question. So let's try this one. A town has a population of 17,000, so that's my initial value, and it has a rate of growth of 4% every year, or one plus, right, I can do one plus 0 0.04. After 12 years, I could also write it like this if I wanted to shrink that down. I could simplify it, but there really is no need for me to do that. I mean, I can, but I don't need to because I'm going to use my calculator to do the mathematics anyways. So 17,000 parentheses 1.04. Oops, forgot my parentheses. Insert parentheses. There we go. And the exponent is 12. So it says round to the nearest whole number. So that's 27,218, 27,218, 27,218, and correct. All right, let's take a look at the last section. The last section also is going to ask you to use your calculator. So the last section, it actually can be done uh, without a calculator if you think about it, um, but it's a lot faster sometimes uh, if you just use your calculator. So let's talk about this formula again. Remember, this is your initial value, 
initial value, and this is your rate of change. Sometimes it's growth, sometimes it's decay, right? Initial value, rate of change. So when I look at my table, anytime my x value is zero, that means that's my y-intercept or my initial value. So I know that my initial value is going to be a 1. And now my rate of change is the growth here. Like what is the, what is happening each time? What is happening each time? And it looks like I'm multiplying by 4 each time. So it probably will have a growth rate of 4. All right. So hopefully what I'm showing you here is making sense. The factor, right, the growth factor here is timesing by 4. And the initial value is 1, but why don't we use our calculator just to be sure. So on your calculator, you're going to have to use this special feature called the stat button. So press stat, and we're going to press edit, number 1. And if there's anything in there, you're going to have to clear it out. So you can press delete, 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 and then go over here and press delete, delete, delete if you need to. Although I could have left those values in there. All right, so X is going to go in list 1. And Y is going to go in list 2. So I'm just going to use my keyboard here. 1, 4, 16, 60. Whoops. I put them in the wrong column. So now i got to delete this all out. <laughs> all right. So we're going to delete, 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 delete. I forgot to arrow over here. we got to arrow over. Now we can put in 1, 4, 16, and 64. All right, all of our data is now located inside the statistics menu by pressing stat, edit. Now, once that data is in, you now need to calculate the exponential regression. So you're going to press stat, and you're not going to see it here, um, but you're going to move over to the calc menu by pressing the right arrow. And this is where we calculate our linear regression. But exponential regression is actually off this screen. So you're going to need to arrow down, or if you want to take a shortcut, just type the number 0. Type the number 0. So it's saying exponential regression. Is all of your data in list 1 and list 2? Yes, it is. So we're just going to press Enter five times. And now it's going to give us our values. It's going to say a 1 goes in the A position, and a 4 goes in the B position, which is exactly what I predicted it would be. So y equals 1, parentheses, 4, parentheses, shift 6, and then I'm going to use my exponent. There we go. Let's see how we do. Fantastic. All right, let's try another one. Let me clear out my writings here. Now, maybe you see it already, right? But we have our initial value, and our rate of change. So it looks like my initial value is going to be 0 0.2, and now my rate of change is, did you see it? I think it's changing by multiplying by 2, but we're going to use our calculators just to be sure. So let's go back to our stat button, let's click edit, and let's delete all of these values here. And I actually don't even have to delete the first list because it's the same numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. So now for my y values, I need to put 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and 1.6. And do you remember what to press? Stat, arrow over to calc, and then number 0. Then you got to press enter five times. Let's see how we did. Initial value is 0 0.2. Our grade of growth is 2, and we got it right. So 0 0.2 parentheses 2, shift 6, and my exponent. Fantastic. And that is how you're going to complete your homework assignment for week homework number 11.